Hi, Kevin Ledoux, the Pragmatic Luthier. I'm back again today um, because I'm shaping some headpieces on some guitar necks. Uh, you may or may not have seen um, that several months ago, I did a video on making headpiece templates, making them in book matched halves so that you can get a nice symmetrical headpiece. So today, I thought I would do a kind of a demonstration on how I actually put those to work because they're not just for tracing. Um, a quick review or a step back, if you will. You know, I I make, first of all, I design my headpiece using oak tag or heavy paper, or whatever you want. And I do that with a symmetrical system, you might say, starting with the center line here. And that way I can shape one half of it and the symmetry makes itself. And when I'm all done with that, turning the camera here, what I have is this wall full of headpiece templates over here. And these are made so that this headpiece might be just like another one, but it's made for a 1 and 11 16 nut, where another one might be for 1 and 3 quarter, or in my case, my personal guitars, my nut is uh, 1 and 7 eighths inches wide. So I've got them for um, each neck width, but I also have them for each instrument I build. I don't care for a large headpiece on a smaller body guitar. It looks a little clumsy. And uh, so I change sizes and do whatever I need to do. And I also have, you know, the traditional uh, squared headpiece. Sometimes these are really nice, uh, nicer than my own design, I think. They all have their place. And so I have several of those. So I'll turn the camera here again and show you that I've got one taped up and I'm about ready to use, but we'll go from here. We'll go backwards and start closer to the beginning. I begin the process uh, by taking the fingerboard that's appropriate to a given neck and I put it in position. And I've positioned this uh, prior to today's video. And I use these registration pins right here. They're just brass pins. Um, I line the fingerboard up on the neck. And I drill those pins in so that now I've got a registration for that. And I'm going to take my headpiece template. And the reason I've got my fingerboard on here is because it's convenient. I can just put that headpiece template right up against that. And in fact, line that up very nicely. It makes it much easier to get this done. And on this end, I'm going to line up center line to center line. By the way, I have on here uh, just a quick tip. I don't know if you can see this real well, but the center line that I've drawn on this headpiece, I've done in a silver pencil. If you use a black pencil, sometimes on a dark wood, that line doesn't like to show up as well. Um, but a silver pencil will, where even a red or a white pencil doesn't want to do that. But the silver works nicely. So anyway, we're lined up there, lined up to our center line, and with my silver pencil, which I've gone and put away, sorry. Okay, we're all lined up, holding carefully. I'm just going to trace that right out. Okay, so there's my outline. And now you could cut this off the excess any way you want to. Um, I'm going to go over to the band saw and do that. Uh, but you could do it by any other means, hand saws or whatever you happen to prefer.
So as you saw in the last segment, um, I cut this out on the bandsaw and then I brought it over to the bench and I hand planed these edges because they're perfectly straight. There's no reason to be setting up templates and routing against them and all of that stuff. I suppose you could and a router might help you here in this curved area coming down toward the fingerboard, but that'll carve out by hand quite nicely. And this end of it was just sanded on a drum sander, or excuse me, on my uh, belt sander, and it'll be refined so that it'll be presentable a little bit later on. So this one is pretty simple, but when you have a more complicated shape, as this is my personal headpiece here, uh, this crest and the sweep and so on, um, yep, you could cut that out with a bandsaw and you can refine it by hand and you can file this out. Cutting these curves can be difficult with a bandsaw because, first of all, you need to bring the headpiece up because of the curvature of the neck, excuse me, the, the angle of the neck. Um, because of that, you need to bring that up on the bandsaw, stage it above the table, and you need an eighth inch blade uh, to cut out these various shapes. And even at that, it's not going to be perfect. The bandsaw is not going to cooperate too well. I didn't demonstrate doing that because I'd have to change my blade to an eighth inch and put the stage on the bandsaw, and I just didn't want to do it. But you could cut this out by hand. You could cut this out with a bandsaw if you wish, and then refine it with rasps, files, scrapers, spoke shaves, whatever you have handy. Um, it's all your preference. But I'm going to show you how I do this with a, a router template. And as you can see, I just rough this out up here with a coping saw uh, because you need to get rid of as much of that waste as you can. Making it easier on the router makes things a little bit less frightening and it reduces, uh, as Robbie O'Brien says, the pucker factor. So I'm going to double face tape this template down and so I'm removing the protective layer here, if I can get it off, which I usually do with a knife. There we go. Sorry for the delay, folks. Don't want to put you to sleep watching this video here. Would have been faster to go get my knife, wouldn't it? Take that off there. Okay. Uh, quick secret to this, I think. I'm putting the end of this down first and matching it up with my headpiece because that's kind of a, or matching it up with my fingerboard because that's a registration. And then I'm very carefully setting down on my center line. And I'm going to press that together pretty good. You want to make sure if you employ this method, you want to make sure that you use enough double face tape under there. Don't be afraid to put it on. And uh, the rougher your headpiece surface is, the less that double face tape is going to want to stick. It'll, it will stick better to a surface sanded to 150 or even 220 than it will an 80 grit surface because there's literally more contact between the tape and the wood. So hoping that that's going to work out okay. Now I'm going to use a router to do this with. And of course, I'm sure many of you already know, I'm going to use a router with an upper guide, a roller guide bearing, and that's going to ride on the headpiece and follow this out. But this is not a free ride. It's still, there's risk involved and there are dangers everywhere. First and foremost, given the direction of the, the spin of the router bit, when I'm on this side of this sweep, that's going to work beautifully because the router is going to be cutting down into the grain of the wood and pushing the fibers toward the, the major piece. And that's going to be just great. Uh, on the other side, however, it's going to be just the opposite. And that router is going to want to grab and tear and do just horrible things. So you have to be extremely careful. And that's why getting rid of as much waste as you can is helpful because the router doesn't have as much work to do. The same is true at the upper end here at the crest um, because on this side as you face the headpiece on your left side the 
the bit is going to have an easier time of it. But over here on the right side, it's going to be working against you. So I'm going to turn off the camera for a second and get set up with some head, some ear protection. And I'm going to work this out. And I'll film that. But if it all goes awry, I promise to turn the camera off before the swearing starts. Um, one other thing I should mention is I'm using this lighter weight router. Uh, I'm doing that because it gives me some visibility and I can see what's going on. And there's not a lot of surface here to bear down on. I'd much rather use a heavier full-size router, but you don't have any bearing surface here to amount to anything. And I've found that the larger router base seems to work against me as much as anything else. So let's, uh, let's set this up and see if we can make it work. So there's the finished headpiece, or that is nicely shaped headpiece, but we're nowhere near done. A router is not going to leave you with a finished surface, at least not in this context with all of these little curves and things. So it's shaped, but because I have to go very slow and cautiously, it builds heat. So you can see there's burning here on the ends. All of this has to be refined with uh, hand sanding and so on, and that's no problem. That's easy enough to do. And even a little bit of hand sanding here on the edges is appropriate and necessary. And of course, the rest of this will carve down in as I carve into the neck. Um, I carve my necks with the fingerboard glued to them, so that's why none of that stuff has been done. Fingerboard goes down next, and just before that, the logo inlay goes in. So there it is. Um, it's easy enough to do with uh, router templates. And if, I would encourage you to watch my video, if you haven't, on making headpiece templates for this purpose. It's an easy process. But as I said before, um, you don't really need to do it this way. There's a lot of ways to do it. You could do it with hand tools or you could do it with uh, the equipment that I've shown you that I use. So there it is. It's, uh, as the old saying goes, it's sex of one, half a dozen of the other. Wait a minute. Did I get that right? That didn't sound right.